Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. Good day to you. Um, happy Friday. Uh, if you're like me, you are looking forward to um, a, a good weekend, a relaxing weekend. Um, I know I'm looking forward to it. Um, you know, I, 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 I've, I've kind of went back and forth with this idea in my mind. Um, I, I've, I've been do my best to listen to God a little more intently here lately and um, I get this this feeling um, I feel compelled to to kind of teach some lessons out of the Bible and 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 I'm just being upfront with you um, I haven't done this in a long time um, but but uh, I just got this I, I feel like there's a call in my life to 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 you know to do things like this and um and and so that's why that's why i'm doing it so it's, it may be a little, a little rough start going um as i get kind of back into a routine or kind of get used to it and i'm um, just making sure that i follow um, god's leading it is my main thing i don't want to do anything out of uh, a self-motivation um so that that's kind of kind of kind of what i'm doing here um so 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 <laughs> um so, so thank you for watching. Um, so I put together a little something. It's, 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 you know, it's a little message that I put together that um, is actually something that God is working in me. Um, he, he's teaching me something about this as well. Um, but the title is The Switch. Um, I went back and forth on what I wanted to call it. Uh, it's really about light and darkness, but I'm calling it the switch because I think, uh, I believe that, that similar to a light switch in your house, um, it, it's easy to turn the light on and then, and then turn the light back off with the switch, right? One moment you got light, one moment you're in complete darkness. And I think in life it's, it's kind of like that. We, depending on our circumstances and our situations and, perhaps even seasons that we find ourselves in, um, it, 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 it could be illuminated with the light or we could be in a place where we're in darkness. And the, what I feel like God's trying to teach me is that it's, it's really simple to just switch on the light, um, but it's just as simple to um, switch it back off and allow yourself to be back in a precarious situation so to speak um, and 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 that's not good and and I, I've learned that in some cases the hard way so I want to talk to you about that I, you know I'll start with really the story in Exodus um, I, mean, I mean I guess you, we could start in Genesis I mean Genesis 1 talks about light and darkness right Genesis 1 um, uh, I'll go there I got my Bible here uh, Genesis 1 tells us that God created the heavens. Uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form. It was void and darkness, there's darkness, uh, was on the face of the deep and the spirit of the Lord was hovering over the face of the waters. Verse three, then God said, let there be light. So there you go, right? That's where that's where light first came into our world. God spoke it and, and boom, just like that, there's light. So similar to you walk in your house, you turn on the light switch, there it is there's light, right? Uh, God spoke it and we flip a switch and there was light. Um, and God saw the light that it was good. And, and I think this is, this is key here. And God divided the light from the darkness. Just think about it. When you walk in your house or w when any of us, when, I, when even me, when we walk in our house and it's dark outside and it's dark in the house, right? The first thing we're going to do is not walk around and try to do some stuff with the light off. We don't do that. The first thing we do is let's find the light switch and you turn on the light. And what happens immediately? The darkness is gone. There, it's not a battle. It's not that the light is gonna struggle to, to turn on, that there's, this, that there, that there's this battle. No, there's no battle. Uh, the, the darkness flees, the darkness is, is gone, right? The, the light takes over the darkness. There, there's no battle, right? And you can get into the, to, to the deep theology of, of just that statement in and of itself throughout the Bible. Um, but but you know, the, the light just it just takes over right that's that's how, that's what happens so that's when that's when it you know the word light first comes into to scripture um, 
And then if you think about, I want to switch up, go to Exodus chapter 10. Um, in Exodus chapter 10, what you have is you're, they're talking about the plagues, the plagues that were, um, that God put on the Egyptians because uh, Pharaoh wouldn't let God's people go. So there was 10 plagues in total. And the ninth plague was a plague of darkness. And in this darkness, the, the, the Egyptians couldn't even see their face in front of their, their, their uh, couldn't see their hand in front of their face because it was so, so dark. Yet God's people um, had light in their dwellings. The Bible says that they, they had light where they were at um, in their homes, in their houses, there was light, but where um, where the Egyptians were, it was utter darkness. And it wasn't just at night. This is this is 24 seven, three full days of complete darkness. Just imagine how, how crazy you'd be going if it was complete darkness. You couldn't even see anything for three full days. We'd be losing our minds, right? Um, and that's kind of what happens when we turn off the light and we allow ourselves to live in darkness. We kind of lose ourselves. Um, I know that that's happened in my life. I, I was teetering back and forth between light, between dark. One day I would be all in doing what I'm supposed to be doing. But the next day I would find myself on a slippery slope back into darkness. And then it was back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then ultimately there was a season in my life where I was completely in the darkness. And now as I'm, as I'm, and, and I've learned this prior, but I, as I'm reading and, and, and learning about the light and the darkness again today, and, and even this past week, as I've been thinking about this, um, I'm, I'm seeing that, yeah, you, you kind of lose yourself. When you get in complete darkness, you kind of lose yourself. You do things that are out of character. But what I also learned that in that season of darkness for me, there, I, I started seeking God. I kind of got done with the darkness and I started seeking God and, 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 and ended up switching on the light, so to speak. And God came to me in my dark situation and gave me an opportunity to get up and to change things. And so that's exactly what happened. Um, but that, that's, that's, that's how easy it can be. And, and don't hear me say that, that every scenario, every season, every difficult or challenging um, uh, scenario that you find yourself in is just going to be an easy fix. I'm not saying that, but the first step to get where you need to be going um, and to get to maybe a full healing in a certain area or season of your life, you've got to flip on the switch, right? And I'll tell you what that means here in a second, but you've got to flip on the switch. The light's got to be on, right? You can't stay in darkness and expect um, to, 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 to move in a direction towards healing or move in a direction towards God. You can't do that. You've got to turn on the light, right? So, so if, if there were three points that I want, that I want to make, it would be these three here. The first one would be, we've got to recognize the darkness. We've got to recognize that the darkness is there. And, and even if we, if, if, if you're a person that lives in the light all the time, uh, maybe, maybe you're someone, you haven't had a lot of struggles through your life and that's fine. No, nope, no problem. Uh, but but the darkness is right around the corner, right? I think I think that's what we've got to recognize. If you remember, um, in in the book of uh, Exodus thirteen, this is after um, you know God's people were already released by Pharaoh out of Egypt, and they were already moving um, out of Egypt towards the Red Sea in the wilderness, right? And and as we said, God was was guiding them by fire at night guiding them by a cloud through the day. And, the, and this light was guiding them, protecting them, uh, leading them right at night. But the Egyptians were, 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 had, had, had decided that they were going to, going to, going to go ahead and follow the, the Israelites and they were going to get them, right? They were going to follow God's people and they were going to, they were going to get them. They, Pharaoh had changed his mind and he was going to get them. Well, guess what? That, that didn't happen uh, because God created another avenue. He, 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 you know, separated the, the, the waters of the Red Sea and they were allowed, they were, they were able to cross over and, and then the water ultimately, you know, um, came back down when, uh, when, when the Egyptians got in there. So we know that that happened, but nevertheless, the, 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 you know, while they were pursuing the light, while they were following the light, what was right behind them? The enemy, the darkness was there. 
Um, so I think that that in my mind, that's that's a picture of the way life is. The way life is, not just now, but the way it's always been. There, there's darkness right around the corner. We can easily turn the light switch off and be right back in darkness. That's how easy it is. You can find yourself in a precarious situation, um, a, a slippery slope type situation where you give in to a weakness or you give in to a thought. And then what happens is, is you find yourself in a situation where it's dark again and, and, and you, you lose hope. Um, you lose your faith. Um, you lose yourself in some cases and you do things that are out of character, which not only affects you, but affects your family, your friends. Sometimes it, it can affect your job. It can affect many, many different things. Uh, your, your mind, obviously your mind, right? Your mental um, state could be affected by, by teetering on the line between light and darkness and then ultimately sliding all the way into darkness is certainly going to mess with your mind. And I think that's what's why we have so many mental health issues um, in our world today. People need to, to, to have the light. They need to have the light. So we've got to recognize the darkness is there. And, and just because we're living in the light and we're pursuing the light doesn't mean that darkness isn't right around the corner waiting for us to slip up, waiting for us to have a moment where we turn the light off. So we've got to be aware of that, right? There's darkness in our world. Uh, we know about wars. We know about rumors of wars. We know about unchrist like behaviors we, we know about all these bad things on a on a uh, an individual local scale and and on a global scale we know this so there's darkness there's darkness in our own personal lives right we've got our own circumstances that we deal with we've got um um you know gossip we got deceitfulness we got lust of the mind lust of the eyes the pride of life we we've got these things that that that, 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 that many people struggle with, including myself. So we've got that darkness that's there. Um, so, so let me ask you this, take, take a moment to just think of a, a dark area, and this shouldn't be difficult, it's not difficult for me. Um, take a moment and think of a dark area in your life, a struggle that you have, or, or maybe a hopeless situation that you find yourself in, think about that. Right? It could be as simple as you know a habit of gossiping at your job. It could be a habit of uh, using foul language, or maybe maybe you drink till you get drunk and you're trying to numb the pain and and get yourself to feel better. It could be a relationship that ended badly and left you feeling hopeless. Uh, it could be a struggle that you have or an addiction that you need to keep to yourself, or not that you need to, but that you want to keep to yourself. And, and that's not a good thing either. If you're keeping something in the dark like that, it's not going to be good. You've got to get that out in the light. All of these things, though, and many more should be brought into the light, right? So you've got to recognize the darkness. You've got to point it out. And sometimes, sometimes, as I've, as I've learned, um, the darkness started a long time ago, right? And, 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 and you know, and, and, it's, and it's easy to point fingers at parents. It's easy to point fingers at, 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 at other things that happened in our past. And I'm not saying we're wrong for, for recognizing that and recognizing those opportunities from back then. But ultimately, it's up to us to make the decision of what we're going to do today. Once you know, once you recognize how you got here, how, how, how the darkness got this bad, once you recognize that, then it's up to you to make the decision to switch the light on and then ultimately leave the light on. So that, that's huge. So we got to recognize the darkness. That's number one. Number two, switch on the light. Yep, it's that simple. Switch on the light. We've got to switch on the light. It's, it's when we walk in the house, if you walk in a new construction and maybe the house isn't completely built yet, you may walk in and it's dark and the lights not even been installed. There's no power to the house yet. The electric company hasn't turned on the power yet. Yeah. You switch on the light. Guess what? Nothing's going to happen. It's not that way when you go to God. Okay. When you go to God with your issues, with your hopelessness, with your struggle, with your darkness, and you try to switch on the light, guess what? The light's installed. Uh, there's already power. Okay, and and you just got to switch on the light. It's it's that simple. Jesus is our light. Okay, the Bible says this is what the Bible says. Not what I say. It's what the Bible says. His word is a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. Okay, so not only does he light up the area of darkness that we're currently in, but he gives us a directional type of light, a light for our path, a light to light the way out of the darkness and, and to consistently stay on the light. That's what he does for us. 
The Bible says that his word is a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. So we, we have that. We have that at our fingertips. Switching on the light is the necessary step to get us out of darkness. Again, I'm going to continue to use the same illustration. You walk in your house and it's dark. You switch the light on and there's light. The darkness goes away. And when you leave the house, you turn the light off. Okay? But, and then there's darkness in the house, obviously, but you're not in the house. So, so, so you got to switch on the light. So as I mentioned earlier, there was, an, there was a time in my life when, when I was in a pretty thick darkness. Matter of fact, I was riding the line between light and dark so much that I ended up being completely in darkness, nearly lost my family, nearly lost my job. It was a terrible time of my life. Um, and, and, but, and then I, I was in this thick darkness. I, I would say that it's, 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 it's uh, equatable to, you know, the Egyptians when they were going through this plague, they, they, they didn't, they could, didn't recognize themselves because they were in this thick darkness for three days. And, and my thick darkness lasted longer than three days. But I do recall, I, I didn't recognize myself. I, if I look back now, I, I wasn't who, it wasn't me. I, I was, I was out, out of my character. Um, I wasn't doing what I know was was the true me, um, but nevertheless, it, it, I, I made some bad decisions, and I found myself in this thick, thick darkness. But then, in the midst of the darkness, God spoke to me um, as I began to kind of distance myself from the darkness and try to pursue His light. God spoke to me. He reached down into the pit of my darkness and offered me a way out. He offered me, a, a, you know, a, a, you know, a, an escape, and I took it. I took the escape, and I came into the light. And it's been a long journey since then to to be consistent and stay in the light. But by God's grace and, and the and, and His mercy and the grace and mercy of many people in my life, um, I've been able to stay in the light pretty consistently since then, um, and, and I'm very thankful for that. But 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 but. You know, you may find yourself in, in a situation where it feels dark, or maybe it is dark. Maybe you're in a thick, dark type situation like I was. God's there. He's waiting for me, wait, wait, waiting for you to say, hey, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to turn the light on. I'm, re I'm ready to deal with this. I I'm ready to get healing again. And, and, and so he, he's ready. So just like I said, darkness is waiting around the corner. Light's right there. Light never left. It's just waiting for you to flip the switch. God's just waiting for you to seek him. So how do you switch on the light? Pretty simple, at least in my mind. You, you've got to spend time with God. You've got to read his word. You, you've got to study the Bible. You, you've got to know his word, right? We, we, you know, like I just said, the word is a, is a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. If you're not studying it, if you're not reading it, if you're not really, really eating the word, so to speak, as the Bible says, um, then, then, then you're going to struggle to stay in the light. You're going to struggle and you're going to be tempted to, to ride that line between light and darkness. So you've got to read. You've got to study. You've got to spend time with the light of the world, right? Jesus calls himself, as, as we're going to look at it here in a second, the light of the world. We've got to spend time with him. It also says in John that Jesus is the word. So this right here is the key. This is the key. Um, you, you've, got to, you've got to spend time in, in the word. You also got to go to church. It's important. Um, you know, it's really, really important to gather together with other believers, right? That can urge you on, uh, that, that can help hold you accountable, um, that can be there for you, that can help to shine a light on areas of your life that, 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 that need a little bit of light. Um, so you need to go to church. Um, in some cases you need to tell a close friend or a close family member about a struggle, right? I know for me, there was times when, when I was going through something and I felt compelled to tell someone else about that struggle. And what was I doing? I was bringing that struggle out of the darkness of my life or, or you know, my, of my heart and, and bringing it into the light, right? And when you bring something into the light, the darkness has got to go away, right? So, so that's what happened. So that's, that's, that's an avenue as well for, for many situations. You need to just let somebody know about it. Let somebody know about the struggle. Um, and then, and then if, if you're a young person, you, it may be, I need to tell my parents, I need to tell my grandparents, I need to tell someone 
that's in leadership in my life about this struggle or about this hopeless situation or about these thoughts that I'm having. You, you gotta tell somebody, it's really important. But ultimately, you gotta spend time with God. You've gotta have a, a daily time with God. And we're gonna talk about that in just a second. But John 8, verse 12, Jesus refers to himself as the light of the world. And he says, whoever follows me, this is key, whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So, I mean, we could, we could close the message right there. That, that's, that's it. That's the, that's, the, that's the key. It tells us right there. I'm going to read it again. He's the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in in darkness, but we'll have the light of life. We'll never walk in darkness. We'll never walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Whoever follows me. What are you saying, Justin? I'm saying that the flip of the switch is as simple as saying, I'm following Jesus. I'm following Jesus. No matter what the world says, no matter what my friends say, no matter what the school says, the government says, maybe in some situations, no matter what my parents say, I don't know what situation you find yourself in, but what I am telling you that the key is follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. When you follow Jesus, the Bible says, those who follow me will never walk in darkness. Does that mean you won't have challenges? No. Does that mean you won't have sickness? No. Does that mean that there will be days that are tougher than others? No. But what it does mean is that you will not walk in darkness. That's what it means. You have hope. You have hope because you're following Jesus, the one who came and died for you, who gives you eternal life, okay? You don't gotta walk in darkness. Just follow Jesus. That's turning the switch on. Boom, follow Jesus, and you're not in darkness no more. You're, you have the light of life. And then in, in, in then Matthew chapter five, Jesus says that we, you and I, are the light of the world. Meaning that us, our, you know, his followers, his children, we are the light of the world. And he says that we cannot be hidden. So once you have the light, once you flip on the switch and you're following Jesus and you, you know, you have that light of life, you can't just let it sit on a, on a, on a stand somewhere and illuminate the one little room of your life. You've got to take it and, and make it a spotlight and share it every where you go. You can't keep the light to yourself because remember, and this is what I do. I remember the situations, the scenarios, the seasons that I've been in, that I allowed myself to get in even, that were full of darkness, full of despair, full of pain and heartache and pain. And what did I do? I allow God to work on me. I, I used the opportunity he gave me to turn on the light, to do surgery on me, to change me from the inside out, where I can keep that light on consistently without much struggle at all. But now I can't keep that to myself. I can't keep it to myself. I've got to share that with other people because I don't want other people to go through what I went through. I don't want other people to struggle with what I've struggled with. And you should be the same way. And once you figure out that you've got to turn the light on and once you figure out that it's got to stay on consistently and how you do that is simple follow jesus don't keep it to yourself friends tell somebody about it share it with other people tell people about jesus and what he offers for us not just salvation and eternity in heaven that's great that's awesome that's enough but he wants us to have freedom on this earth he wants us to have freedom on the earth so don't 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 hide that light share it with others so we got to recognize the darkness. We got to switch on the light and we've got to live in the light. Consistency is key, my friends. It's key, right? You've got to have a habit of living in the light. You've got to spend time with God daily. It can't just be a once a week uh, uh, trip to church. It's got to be a daily thing. Do you wake up daily? Yeah, you do. Do you go to sleep daily? Yeah, you do. Do you eat daily? Yeah, you do. Do you go to work daily? Yeah, you do. Do your kids go to school daily? Yeah, you, we do so many things daily. You brush your teeth daily? Yeah, well, you should be brushing them twice a day. But anyways, you brush your teeth daily? Yeah. Do you take a shower daily? I hope so, but you got to take a shower daily, right? There's so many things we do on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly schedule, but yet we find it so difficult, me included, 
to develop a pattern, develop a habit, develop this consistency of spending time with God daily. All right? We always find an excuse for that one. Right? Did you forget to brush your teeth? No. But did you spend time with God? Ah, I forgot to. Or I didn't have time. Come on. Come on. This is not me shaming anyone. I'm, I'm trying to urge you on to, to greatness. You, you, we've got to spend time with God. He's the one. He, he's the savior of the world. He's the light of the world. He is the key to not living in darkness. He's the key. You, you, you know, you, 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 you want... You know, uh, I'm gonna, this is going to sound strong, but we want to go to church and, 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 and have God speak to us how to get out of a situation. And that's, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But when we do that, I mean, we want a pastor to tell us how to do this. And we want this person to tell us how to do this. And we, we want this easy, easy fix. And God's like, why don't you just spend some time with me? Come see me on a daily basis. I want to talk to you. I, I want you to talk to me. Read his word. Again, not trying to guilt trip or shame anyone. What? Because I'm there. I've been there before. You've got to spend time with God daily. Once a week at church is not enough. That's important. But you want true freedom? You want to live in, in, in light all the time? And not just every now and then? You've got to turn the key. How do you turn the key? You've got to follow Jesus. How do you follow Jesus? You've got to have a close relationship with him, not just a Sunday relationship, not just a Christmas and Easter relationship. You've got to have a relationship with him. If you only spent one day a week, in some cases one hour a week with your wife uh, or, or your husband, whoever, you know, if you're male or female, shouldn't even have to say that, but... But, you know, um, if you spend time with your spouse one hour um, a, a week, do you think that's enough to have a good, safe, healthy relationship? No, not even close. It's got to be consistent. There's got to be communication daily. It's got to be. So consistency is key. Daily quiet time is key. Daily worship and reading of the Bible, that's key. You've got to be intentional about shining the light on every dark area of your life. So yeah, you've got to be intentional about having a daily time with God. Yeah, that, that's key, as I said. But also, any dark areas, any dark struggles, anything that you deal with occasionally or consistently, you've got to always be shining the light on that. Don't let the enemy, don't let the darkness tempt you into leaving a struggle, leaving a situation in the darkness and tempting you to think, I can figure it out on my own. I can deal with this. I don't need to tell anybody about this. No, you do. You need to tell somebody, even if it's God, you, you got to tell somebody about the darkness. Otherwise, it's going to it's gonna sit there. It's going to fester. It's going to turn ugly. And then you're going to be in a thick darkness like the Egyptians, not even recognizing yourself. Okay. So you've got to be intentional about shining the light on every dark area in your life. When we keep things in the dark, we are giving the enemy the upper hand and allowing him an opportunity to deceive us and the, to destroy us. Okay? Switch on the light and leave it on. Okay? And, and then think about it like this. I don't know if you've ever been in, in a business. Uh, well, I know you've been in a business, but I don't know if you've ever been in a business that there, there's like a light switch or some type of switch that they have on the wall and it's in, and sometimes it's the temperature setting as well, but let's say it's a light switch and, and it's in a, a plastic security type casing on the wall that's under lock and key, right? Um, what I'm telling you to do is once you turn the switch on um, in your life and you got the light on, keep it on. Put it under lock and key, okay, so to speak. Put the security box on it, turn the key, and 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 lose the key for all I care. But 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 keep the light on and don't switch it off. Keeping the light on is keeping the hope on. It's keeping the freedom flowing. It's keeping Jesus first place in your life. It's keeping consistency key. Keeping everything in your life illuminated. By doing that, you're going to find that God will use you to shine the light that he's giving, given you 
to help others. So, as, as, I, as I try to wrap this up, I ask, what can you and I do to keep the light shining in our lives? Because as much as I am urging you all on, I'm urging myself on to keep the light shining. We've got to recognize that darkness is just around the corner and all it takes is one flip of a switch, one bad decision, one hopeless situation, one death in the family, one struggle, one addiction, fill in the blank. The enemy, darkness, is awaiting the moment we slip up and turn the light off. Now don't hear me wrong. I'm not saying that there's not times for mourning, specifically if you have someone that dies in your family. There's, there's times for mourning. That doesn't mean you're in darkness. Mourning is healthy. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's when we stay there and we become depressed, then we enter into some darkness. And that's not healthy. It's not healthy at all. So keep the light on. Challenges are going to come. Uncomfortable life situations are going to happen. It's inevitable. Things that don't seem fair are going to occur in our lives. But God and his magnificent light is with us, watching over us, protecting us, and leading us. Friends, we've got to keep following Jesus. Let me remind you of what the word says. Jesus is the light of the world. And Jesus said this, whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. This whole message has been about the switch. Let me ask this, is the light on in your life? Is the light switched on? Is every dark area, every dark struggle illuminated? If it's not, I ask that you, I challenge you to, to turn the light on. Turn the light on, get help, get healing. Follow Jesus. I promise you, it will be the best decision you ever made. And it will save you a lot of heartache down the road if you'll just switch the light on and let Jesus help you. I want to close in prayer. Father God, I thank you, thank you, thank you for your love, your peace, your mercy, your grace. God, I thank you for the light that you provide us. Not only the light in the world, but God, the light specifically for us that you shine on our lives to keep us on the straight and narrow. You provide that light. And so, God, I pray for myself. I pray for my friends watching that we will consistently stay in the light. We know temptations are going to come. You were tempted, Jesus. So we know temptation to walk in the dark is going to come. We pray for your strength, your wisdom, your guidance to stay on that path. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you. You're worthy. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys. Have a great day.